Okay, we're back, and um, it's Comp 2068. It's uh, winter 2016 term, um, week two, lesson two, part three of our broadcast for advanced web programming. And we talked about um, deploying directly through uh, to Azure and using a de continuous deployment. Notice how I've got three now, and to fix my problem, it was a stupid error. Um, if I went to, if I go to Visual Studio Code um, in my application files, notice how I've moved from index.js to server.js. So what Microsoft Azure requires, now not all of them require this, but Azure as an endpoint requires some way of knowing what you're doing. And server.js seems to be the, the, the way to do it. So please go up in line on your, sorry, on your, on your Visual Studio, change your index.js, rename it to server.js or server.ts, recompile everything the way you did it before. Get rid of the other files you don't need. Get rid of the index.js and the index.map file, right? And just change everything to server.ts and then re recompile, and it'll give you your map and your JS file. Upload it to GitHub and it should work. Okay, did you do that? Works? Yeah. So the reason for this is because, like I said, Azure needs to know what you're doing. And typically what we have is when you're building a regular app, a regular application, right, when we do a continuous deployment, you don't have... You have an index.html page, or you have an index.htm page, or you have a default.asp page, or whatever it's going to be, right? You have some endpoint that Microsoft understands. So this is how we make Microsoft understand. Okay, so, and notice also in my package.json file, just as an aside, I've also changed that. I changed my main, so it says server.js. Um, and the reason why I want to do that is because I want to use some testing tools locally Right, so when I make changes, they, it automatically restarts my application. Right, so let's talk about those changes for a second. Well, let me know who, by the way, if you if you made these changes, go from index.js to server.ts, and if it doesn't work, okay. So if you have it doesn't work, what does it give you? Same thing. All right. No, sorry, now it's Right, right. So I was going to say you have to wait sometimes, and sometimes what you have to do is take your your link and put it into an incognito browser. Right, because what happens is it caches your previous version and it won't launch. Right, not because it's not working, but because and Microsoft sometimes takes some time to set up the redeployment. So if I go back to Microsoft now on the Azure side, I have three deployments. My first, my first one, the one I changed when I changed the environment variables. Right, and then my when I changed from index.js to server.js, those three deployments. So it's actually mirroring what I see in my GitHub, and that's why this is so powerful. Right. I automatically deploy to GitHub my changes, and boom, I see my changes live, right? So there's no more, I don't have to use any kind of, um, you know, FTP or whatever. I could. I could do FTP. And if you notice here, on the left, um, even though it says my URL, I do have, I could, I mean, I have other credentials that I can go into, um, you know, to kind of uh, set up my FTP and so on, right? If I go to settings, as an example, um, I, I see, or any one of these tools or settings or whatever, you can see that there's a bunch of stuff here that it'll, it'll give you um, for, for different deployments. Like, for example, if I want to have my credentials, if I go down to my publishing, let's go to settings for a second, and if I go to publishing and if I go to deployment credentials, notice that I can set up an FTP um, a username and password and all that kind of stuff so I can actually uh, FTP into my site if I really want to. I don't want to, and I probably never will. And in this course, we'll never do an FTP into a server because it's old school, right? For a node, we don't do that. Um, for other legacy frameworks, you may have to, right? Because, and again, how many people support node? There's not a lot of local providers, I'll be honest with you, that support node. They support PHP, they support index.html, they support Python on the back end, like uh, Flask or something. Java EE and so on, but they don't support Node. And that's why we moved to a cloud, another reason we moved to a cloud service. Okay, we did it on Azure, I want to do it on Heroku, which means you need to sign up with a Heroku, a Heroku for yourself. I want to give you an alternate. Why am I giving you an alternate? Because here's what's going to happen during the semester. Tom, I used up all my Azure credits, right? And I, you know, I, I want to hand in my, 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 my assignment, but I got no credits. So if you go there, you won't be able to see anything. I might get that from you guys, right? So instead of that, I want to give you a backup. And I want to give you a backup with Heroku. So what, what is Heroku? Let's go there. So here, you can sign up or log in. If I log, if I, I'm already signed up, I'm going to click Login. And 
um, I'm going to sign up with my email address. I think it's I think it's that. Yes, it is. I have several little examples that I've got going on on Heroku, right? And um, the way you set up um, a an app on Heroku when you when you finally sign up and sign in is it's like you're going to use the continuous deployment again. Let's show you how this is done, right? Watch. You're going to go to when you're in Heroku after you sign up and everything else. You're going to go to Plus, right? And you're going to do a new app. Very simple. You're going to give it an app name, right? Now it can it will give you one a random one on its own, right? But you might as well name something. So for example, I want to do Comp 2068 uh, Winter 2016, right? And then it's Lesson 02, really long, uh, Part 3, right? Because we're at, we're at Part 3 right now. That's my app name. And it's the, the whole app is going to be Comp 2068 da -da -da -da, at Heroku.com or something like that, right? That's what it's going to be. OK, I'm going to create my app. Yay, created. And my deployment method, GitHub, <laughs> right? Wow, this seems familiar, right? I go to GitHub and I look at the, and now you have to give it, you, it'll, for the first time it'll ask you for your credentials. It'll say, please give me your credentials for GitHub, blah, blah, blah. You say okay, you admit, you accept. And then once you do that, it's, you have a choice again. So here I'm going to choose Georgian. And then under Georgian, um, notice how it doesn't give me my repo name. I can certainly search for it. So I know it's like, you know, comp. 2068, as an example, I can click search and it'll bring up all the ones with comp 2068. And notice that this one is the one I want, uh, lesson two part two, even though it's my lesson two part three. And I click connect, right? It goes up, it connects, right? And it's it's connected. Now I can do I can do this. I can enable automatic deploys. <laughs> like this is dumb, like simple dumb, like even simpler than, than Azure, right? So enable automatic deploys. And it's going to go up. It's going to do that, right? And whatever. And then notice how on the bottom here, I got to go to deploy branch. So my branch is master, my master branch. If I click deploy branch, it's going to do its deployment dance. La la la, da 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 da, ba ba ba. It's going to go through and do its deployment. And then if everything goes well, right, my app is successfully deployed, right, um, on Heroku. And if I click view, then it's going to be Hello World. That was easy. <laughs> In fact, that was easier than Microsoft, right? I'm giving you this because I don't care what you use. I'm trying to give you a couple of cloud services you can use. Heroku, easy as pie, like really easy, right? You go in, you create your app, right away you go. And um, notice I have a bunch of them, but none of them are really running. And they're the lowest level. Now, you can actually pump up Heroku so that it charges you money, right? You don't have to do that. So tool number two, who's able to not, who, anyone have any trouble with Heroku, right? Because I know now we're going to stop for this one, right? Heroku is, is cloud service two, all right? If you're, by the way, if your app doesn't work on Microsoft, it won't work on Heroku, FYI, right? So if it's not working still somehow, fix it. <laughs> Change it to server.ts and server.ts and recompile and all that stuff first, or else this is going to fail too, all right? Yes. What's your primary development language you pick? What's the options? Node. Node. OK. Um, anyone else have any other issues with Heroku? Has everyone deployed on Heroku? Anyone do, was everyone able to do that? Who's able to do to Heroku? That should be like a two-step, like one, two, three, like I just did, right? Just to recap for those people who didn't see that because I went too fast, right? If I go back to Heroku on the top for me to deploy, once I've created my application, I've chosen GitHub as my connected deployment method. I went down after I've, I've connected with GitHub. I chose the um, which repo I'm connecting it to. And again, you have to give credentials to GitHub that you give it a permission so that you can use GitHub. Um, I'm going to go in this place where it says automatic deploys, and I'm going to choose uh, enable automatic deploys here. This, that, I mean, I'm enabled already, right? 
Then I'm going to scroll down all the way to the bottom where it says manual deploy, and then I'm going to deploy my branch for the first time. So I deploy my branch. And once I deployed it, it did its dance, all right, deployment dance, and it was done. Then you can click view to test. Okay, that's the, the, the process. Okay, so I've got my app, everything's good, and now I'm automatically deploying to both Azure and Heroku. That's pretty cool. Um, there's one other service we're going to need because remember the we're talking here about the mean stack and the first letter of mean is Mongo, right? Which we're going to take up in a couple weeks, right? Mongo lab is how we do things online and we want to be purely online, right? So let's get a, a, an account through Mongo lab, right? Now there's a couple ways to do this. If you go Mongo lab, let's search for it. Here it is. I want you to set up a free account, right? And again, you get some pretty good free stuff. This is an online D, uh, cloud service, Mongo Lab, MongoDB as a service, right? Which we're going to do um, because if you try and set up MongoDB locally, remember we did all that environment variable stuff and blah blah. <laughs> we're going to do that again, right? And we're going to do that again for MongoDB, which is like another another little pain that we're going to go through, right? I'm going to do it both locally and remote. But before we get there, please sign up for MongoDB. Don't wait. It's a quick sign up. Let's get that done. All right. Here's a scenario. You're a developer and you forgot your laptop. Right? But you know what? And you, you don't want to set up all your stuff again. Right? Because it's, it's messed up, eh? It's a messed up when you want to set up everything again. And we, just, we just spent, what, two days, full days, almost six hours now, setting up for, uh, for MeanStack. Right? And the reason why we're doing that is because, you know, hey, right, like there's a little, there's all this in the development environment and there's some stuff to learn, right? There's some, a process, almost what we call a workflow, right? You start off, you set up your, your, your uh, project in the exact same way. My recommendation again is use a template. Have a, have a, have a template working, ready to go, so you don't have to uh, do all this stuff over and over again. It takes too much time, right? So that's the first part. So all this stuff has to be done, and now your laptop you forgot at home, or you forgot your power bar, right? And now you, you don't want to use the machines in front of you because maybe the machine that you're sitting in front of isn't configured properly, or maybe you're not in front of a machine here, you're somewhere else, and you want to still work. How do I work? How do I develop, right, without a machine? That's the question. And now you might, some people might get really mad because you could have done this from day one, but I got to show you the hard way first, and then I'll tell you the other. There's a service called Cloud9. And you may have not heard of this, or may have. Let's go to that service. And Cloud9, uh, don't go to cloud9.gg. That's not cool, right? <laughs> go to cloud9.io. That's the one you want to go to, right? And if you go to cloud9.io, there's you can set up something called workspaces. And you get a couple of workspaces for free, right? So, um, you know, as an example, you see that I've got a few of them that I was working on lately. Right? Um, how do I set these things up and, and what do I do? How do I delete them? If I right click here, you notice that there's, I don't really have control of the workspace right here so much. I have workspace. If I click workspaces, that's one. Shared with me, I can have shared, and repositories. I have access to my repositories. Look at how I have a bunch of, of repositories here because I'm linked into GitHub. This can, uh, links to GitHub, if you will. Right? Here's a bunch of them that I want to, I can link to. Notice there's tons. Okay, cool. Um, so what do I do here if I want to make a repository in, in, in Cloud9? So I set up an account and I click on create new workspace. Do it with me, right? And don't hate me afterwards, okay? I swear. I didn't mean to make you mad, all right? Create new workspace. All right, the workspace should have the name that we're working on. So let's call it, you know, comp2068, if I can spell with lowercase because it only likes more lowercase. Winter 2016 and then it's lesson two part three. Again variations of the same name. Okay cool. Is it private or public? Well, I don't mind if it's public because I'm not sharing any special thing. And take a look a, a template. Here's some templates I can use. Well look there's a Node.js template. I think that's the one I want. So I'm going to choose Node.js. And I'm going to create my workspace. Don't get mad. All right. And when it, it, it runs, 
and it's going to set up my workspace. And what is it really doing here? It's going to set up a little Ubuntu server, virtual server that's free. You're going to be running your whole IDE through a browser. You can run a Chromebook. You don't even need a powerful browser at all, right? Everything online, your whole in, uh, development environment on the cloud, right? So I don't have to use, I don't have to use um, you know, my, uh, my local environment at all. Okay, I got some node modules. Notice how I have some stuff. It starts me off with a server.js. Let's take a look. If I double click, it gives me a little server.js here, right? With uh, an express, um, it's an express uh, app actually what they've given us, right? A little readme.md file. Here it is, readme.md, right? Tell me how to, uh, to set things up um, and so on. So completely, you know, a complete site that's like, you know, um, it's ready to go and um, I, can, I can start running this thing. Well, look what I have here, okay? On the bottom, I have my command line tools, right? So I go ls, oops, ls, and I have my, my packages here. I even have TSC, right? If I go TSC minus V, right, it says it's an old version, 0.97. Who cares? You're never going to transpile on this one. You're going to transpile on the command line, which is totally cool. If you're going to do it online, you have no laptop, you have no power, you can still do stuff, still code. I can always do npm install. If I go npm install, if I few now sometimes it's a little bit slow because remember I'm I'm on, I'm on the cloud. npm install as an example, and if I want to install Bower as an example, right, and then minus g for global, as an, I can do that. It'll go up there and install stuff like I normally can. So I'm going to go install Bower. And it's going to grab stuff and install it ins inside my application framework. This little Ubuntu server, right? that's what it's going to do. Which means I can grab all my stuff. I can install TSD, which I'm going to do in a second. right? So TSDs are type definition library systems. Let's do that. So npm install TSD, right, minus G. It's going to go in there and install TypeScript. I can even up try to update TypeScript. It won't work. That's one thing I don't have. I don't have complete control. And the reason I'm saying you're going to get mad because some people they run with Cloud9 exclusively. They never run in, in a, um, a local development environment. Right? Why? I can go on your machine. I can go on his machine. I can go wherever I want and work. And I have everything. Everything. I have access to my Git. And I've, I can go. And I can, you know, come basically launch to Heroku or whatever I want. Everything as normal without any kind of tools. Right, so as an alternate, worst case scenario, forget your laptop and it's a test. Cloud nine, right? I'm going to tell you to go to cloud nine. So we have to try it out a little bit, right? All right, I'm going to clear the screen, and um, so I've got some node modules. Let's uh, do one more. Um, npm install, right? TypeScript just just to make sure that I that I have I've tried it. It won't work though. Minus G, only because even if I do npm install TypeScript and it gets me the latest version of 1.7.5. It won't matter um, if I do a TSC minus V. I still get, um, if I'm not wrong. <clears throat> Sorry. Clear. TSC minus minus version. I still get uh, 0.9.7, but that's okay because it'll still transpile when I want to. <coughs> All right. Notice how uh, this folder structure has client, a, cli a bunch of client files. And some node modules, and the node modules that it has built in are Express, Socket IO, Async, and um, and a dot bin folder for other stuff for Express, right? So I started off with a with a an application that's not empty, it's not blank. But how do I start off with one that's already been created? Because I want to go back to my Cloud Nine as an example, and I want to change. I want to go back to my you know to you know to my main Cloud Nine site. How do I do that, right? Because I want to go back. By the way, I can preview and run it and everything else. I can I can actually create a little little uh, uh, my running application in the browser, and this is what it's going to look like, right? No application seems to be running, but I can create a task runner right where I can run it. The whole thing is possible here in um, in Cloud9. All right. So here's my workspaces, and if I go to navigate, right, um, I can see my package.json here or whatever. If I want to go back to Cloud9, like the main site, so I'll go back to c9.io. It's going to take me back to this place, right? And now I've got another workspace. So how do I clone one of the ones I have? If I go to repositories, 
right, as an example, and I look at, I go to my filter, and I look for comp, comp 2068, so that's the one I kind of wanted, right? And if I want to look at uh, dash, uh, you know, winter 2016, right, there's the one right there, and here's a Georgian college, I can clone to edit, right, this is the exact one that I have from before, look, part two, lesson two, part two. I'll clone this one and go up and clone that, that repository too. And it'll create, it'll create another container for me, right? And when it's done, it'll be the exact files that I have with everything that I had online, my type definition libraries, the whole thing. Here's my typings. Now, one thing that I can't do, and I'm just warning you in advance, is um, I can't do a TS, like a, a, a transpile uh, with one command. I have to go through and transpile um, by hand. Right, so an example of that would be this: if I had another, um, you know, some kind of other file, like let's say I made an app.js uh, app file. Let's do that. So I'm going to right-click on here, and I'm going to go add a new file, and we're going to call this app.ts. And right, here's app.ts. Right, and I double-click on this thing to work on it. Okay, notice how on the bottom it detects that it's TypeScript, right up online, and I want to write some simple TypeScript. Like let's say, for example, I want to do you know, here's my, my class person, right? We kind of showed, saw this last uh, last week as an example, right? And under class person, I want to uh, have a constructor, right? Oops. If I can type properly, how about them apples? And then, uh, there we go. And then I want to have some kind of um, a private instance variable that I'm going to call underscore name, which is of type string. Right? And I'm going to pass in a name that's a string, right, into it. And I'm going to say this dot underscore name, right, is equal to name. Right? So I can do that. And of course, this person class, this is the our, our private instance variables. That's what these are, right? And this is my constructor function. And of course, this is my class, my person class, right? So person class. There we go. So I've got this in here, and you know what? Um, I'm not going to kick it off. Maybe I have also a method for this class, so I have some kind of, um, you know, say hello method. So a public say hello method that returns void, right? And inside my public say hello method, I'm going to do a console.log. That's going to say hello, right? And maybe I'll set something like, you know, so-and-so, the name of the person, so this dot underscore name, right, plus, you know, hello, right, space says hello, right, there we go. So kind of uh, something, I'm going to save that file, and I want to transpile, but there's no way of transpiling automatically like we do it locally, so how do I do this? How do I do this uh, remotely, right, or with the, on the command line? So I clear it. And I know that it's my app.ts that I want to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and say tsc space app.ts. And I press enter. And if everything goes well, it's going to go out there and transpile everything from app.ts to app.js. And now if I double click on app.js to see what it looks like, I get my transpiled method. So everything works. So my transpiled, I can go from one thing like TypeScript to JavaScript, no problem. You're going to say, yay, it's good, I've got this thing going. Um, now, how do I upload to GitHub? Well, remember that I've connected to Git, right? Git, I've cloned the Git repository here locally, which means if I do, and I'm just going to put it out there for you, if I do a clear, oops, if I do a clear, and if I go in here and I say uh, git log, right, it's going to show me a bunch of these commits that I've got in here, right? Here's my git log, right? So that means I can do a git push because it knows about my git repository. So I say git push. I got to be careful. When I make this push, it's going to go to Azure. It's going to go to Heroku, right? Git push and it's uh, origin master, right? And it says, okay, it says, let me see what it says here. It says permanently warning, permanently added github.com to the list of known hosts, everything up to date. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't do a git add dot 
and git commit. So I'm going to say git add dot, git commit minus m. We'll say added app.ts, which is the one we added, right? Here it is, clear, git push origin master. And then it's going to go up, connect, blah, blah, send it up. And then that means, if I didn't mess, it, I mess everything up, that if I go up online, somewhere like this, and I refresh, I'm still golden. And if I check to see where it's coming from, this is Roku, right, as an example. And I can also t uh, uh, test the Microsoft side, right? So there's, um, I want to test Microsoft on one of these links that I got here. Yeah, this one. No. No. One of them. Here, I'll go to Comp 2068 Microsoft. <clears throat> and I uh, don't know where it is, but I'll, I'll find it on Microsoft. There it is somewhere. Here it is. This one. Come on. Yay. And if I look at it, if I wanted to go inspect, um, even though it won't show me my, from a console perspective, it doesn't show me anything, but let's look at sources for a second in my debugger, right? In my sources, um, again, I have, you know, content scripts. I can look at those code snippets or sources. And notice how everything is hidden. I don't see a darn thing, and that's good, right? I can't look at it like I normally would. If I was going to look at sources or, or whatever normally, I could see the entire my entire web application. But here it's all hidden because it's on the back end. It still runs, though, which is good. So let's talk about the stuff as a recap of what we've done today. We deployed to Azure, which took a lot longer than I wanted to. Why? Because you signed up for Azure ahead of time, right? You had signed up. And we, we did the whole Microsoft account thing. We did a continuous deployment. So if I ask you next week, what's a continuous deployment? It's a way of um, deploying to a website, right? And when I make a change on a repository like or some kind of uh, service like GitHub, it automatically changed my web app. It watches GitHub constantly for a change, right? And so does Heroku. Heroku also is, watch, is, is watching that same folder, the same directory. So I can have two deployments. I have two instances of the same web app running at the same time, one through Heroku and one through Azure. By the way, that's not a bad way of doing redundancy, right? So supplying a second, um, a second instance. OK, cool. So I've got these two. You're going to sign up for MongoLab. Anyone have trouble signing up for MongoLab? It's two seconds to sign up for MongoLab, right? We're going to use MongoLab in concert with Azure and with Heroku. So if you don't have a MongoLab account, we might slow you down. OK, cool. Um, we've talked a little bit about Node today. For the first time, we made our first Node server, right? You still don't quite know what you made, right, for the most part. But the great thing is you should understand request response, right? So if I look at my server.ts file, I have a request that goes out to the server, and I have a response that comes back from the server, right? And my response writes two things. Something that says everything is OK in my, in my response, and something that says hello world to my, to, out to the, to the browser, right? We're going to get way more complex than this. And it's all on the back end with no index.html page, all right? That's the one thing. We use TypeScript to get code hinting for, our, um, you know, for the stuff we've written here. And that's the first time for if we look at RER, you, you, you remember last time we did this, right? There was no code hinting and no .js whatsoever, right? So it was brutal. And if, you, if you're looking at it trying to figure out what it all does, here you're getting the inner workings of how this thing is, work, is, this thing is functioning. So you did this. And finally at the end, we, we got working with Cloud9, which is an online IDE as an alternative to working in your local environment. You forgot your laptop. You know, you don't, or you forgot your power supply, or maybe, you know what, you really like working online, and you don't want to be tied to any kind of physical device. You can work anywhere, anytime, any place, even on a Chromebook, and you don't need special tools, right? There's other services that do the same thing out there. You should look for them, right? There's, it's, it's kind of a new trend. A lot of other uh, developers are working in that way. They're, they're, they're shedding their their ability to work locally, they say, I don't want to have tools. I don't want to mess up my, my install. Imagine all the things we're doing on our laptops, right? I'm, I'm, all these things, two days, I've been working on trying to get stuff on your laptop, changing your environment variable. I don't going to do anything of that. It's ready to go, right? And that's the, the alternative. So think about it in the future. A company is going to come up with an environment. You log in. It creates a virtual machine for you, and away you go. There's nothing for you to do. Everything is updated for you, right? 
everything that has to be done is done. You don't have, there's no, uh, any of this rigmarole we're doing right now. All you're doing is developing. Questions around this stuff, right? One thing we didn't get to is, and unfortunate for us, is our assignment number one. Um, I have it ready, but I want to discuss it about, uh, discuss it next week. It's a couple of weeks that it takes you for this assignment. It's the portfolio website with Express, right? So it's an Express website. You're going to make a portfolio website with Express and Node, right? Um, and I'm going to give you the, the details first thing next week when we get back together, okay? Any other questions before we go? Guys, thank you so much. See you next week. And um, good luck. I want you to sit there if you can practice some of this stuff. Remember, next week, first thing when you come in, we're going to do a little, a little test. And it's going to be, like I said, probably like closer to 10 questions now. Because we have some questions from last week and this week. Okay? Thank you.